The feedback on the last Stickman Trenches video was absolutely incredible. There were over 1,000 comments, all giving valuable feedback and creative ideas, and in many cases, memes, which were amazing. Like when I asked for unique units and someone added the baguette mortar for the French, I literally looked that up thinking, I was like, I've never heard of it, but maybe it's real. No, <laughs> it's, it's just a meme. I love you guys. But in the last video, I asked, how are we going to make the three current factions, Germany, the United Kingdom, and France, feel more different? The decision is to have a passive buff, an active buff, which is given by technology, and a unique unit. So the current question of the day is which of these would you like first? The unique unit, the passive buff, or the active buff from a unique tech upgrade or tech tree for each nation. Now, as we're about to play with the Brits right here, I wanna show you guys that we now have unique light tanks for each of the nations. So I've got a development build. Here's the Whippet tank that the Brits use. It looks pretty nice. And you'll notice that the Brits do not have an option for a cannon version of the Whippet tank. Now, France is obviously keeping the Renault FT-17, and it comes in two varieties, the machine gun version and the cannon version. They also have this absolutely massive new Char 2C, which some of you actively pointed out, well, that wasn't technically a part of World War I. You're right, but we're using a specific rule in terms of development. We are historically inspired. We are not historically bound. By not being historically bound, we can use a very really good rule for game development. The rule of cool. Oh, you poor little guys. What do the Germans have as their light tank? Well, they have the heavy tank, which is the A7V, and it looks like this weird giant, I don't know, almost like a refrigerator rumbling across no man's land. But for the light tank, for the Germans, we've added the light tractor, and it comes in two varieties machine gun and cannon. So right now you may notice, and to me it kind of seems like, it almost looks like a landing craft from its profile view right here. Light tanks are obviously faster than heavy tanks and pretty impressive in action. Oh, these poor Frenchies. Three tanks at the same time. Now one of the other cool things that's been happening is all of the recent reviews for Stickman Trenches in the last 30 days are very positive, 96% rating. I think it shows that we're doing a really good job. So if you haven't checked it out, we've got a demo and you can buy it on Steam using the link in the description. And if you have played it and you're enjoying it, feel free to leave a Steam review. It helps us immensely. So since the French are the new guys, we're gonna take them into battle and we're gonna be discussing what the next steps are. Now I think in this part of the game, I think it would be advantageous for me to build a heavily fortified front line and choose the upgrade for faster reinforcement on my rifleman. Now, the timing may be perfect, we'll see. Okay, that machine gun guy arrived at the perfect time. We're gonna unlock the shotgunner because it's basically saving a metal. So like I said, there were over a thousand comments, which is amazing. Remember what the ask of the day is, is which would you like to see first for the nation differentiators? Would you like to see the unique unit, the unique technology, which we go to the tech tree and it would be over here, like France's would be over here. There'll be one to four different things that we could implement. And some of those might be implemented over time as we, the developers and you, the community who's helping develop this game, come up with some really good ideas. And then finally, the passive buff. I think the passive buff is sort of the more boring one, especially visually, but it might be one of the more impactful ones in terms of gameplay and what makes each nation feel different. Look at these guys. The Brits are bunching up. I'm thinking we want a flamethrower and a machine gunner. As far as what we want, I mean, we're all tanks, baby. All tanks, all the time. Going to the comments is pretty interesting. NATO Cannon was saying that for each faction, the research tree should be more focused on one type of statistic and have less for the others. I agree completely. Now they made the point that the French should be focused on reinforcement and speed, while the Germans should focus on defense and chem chemical special abilities. Another one was by Stridswagen. Germany should be defense focused. So many people were commenting how the Germans were known to have the best in most heavily fortified trenches in World War I. And then you had Shadow Wolf saying that we need a baguette mortar for the French. So starting with the Germans, let's think about it. As we prepare for our attack against, hey, those are our friends and allies, at least in the real world, the British. But the Germans were very defensive, had heavily fortified trenches that they used and thought of as more permanent fixtures as opposed to, say, the Allied powers. So the thinking is, right now, 
As you can see here, the trenches, this is an, a not upgraded one. This one's been upgraded once or twice, and now it's fully upgraded. There would actually be, if you were playing Germany, another upgrade option, and maybe it would turn it into like more concrete type of fixtures. So visually, you could tell that's a heavily upgraded German trench. Now, France and the United Kingdom would not be able to do it. They'd be stuck with the basic one, two, and three levels instead of the fourth tier. That would be a really cool idea, and that's sort of... I guess maybe more of a passive buff, but at the same time, it's a actual upgrade. Something to think about. Now, for the unique unit, I think Germany is relatively easy. As we prepare to rush this trench, I think I want to hit this trench and then pull back. I don't know how many of these people are going to make it back, but it's a decent attack and we are on normal difficulty so that my commentary is going to be a little bit easier. Ooh, one metal or unlocking a flamethrower troop, which is worth two. I think that's obvious. Now this one's actually coming down to the wire and it's a decent standoff. Ooh, I'll take the medals please. And they just reinforced it with an officer and a flamethrower. But we pulled out and took the victory there, which was fantastic. Leading us back to where we left off. The German unique unit should be the Stormtrooper. I think all of us can agree on that. Now the Stormtrooper would be similar to the SMG unit, which right now in the game, this machine gun is sort of in this awkward place because he's called the machine gunner, but he's sort of a submachine gunner. And the idea was maybe the machine gunner was actually a guy who went up to the front of the trench and mounted his machine gun and was excellent at defense. But right now he's sort of a very good defense and attack troop. I'm thinking I want to get troop upgrades, which is interesting that we're France since we don't have the option to do tank upgrades. So moving on to the United Kingdom as we face off against them in the trenches, some people were saying in the comments that United Kingdom should have a stronger economy like they did during World War I. I don't know if that would just be too powerful though. Let's get some more flamethrowers here as we prepare to attack. And future metals should be used for tanks. They've got a couple flamethrowers all here. I wanna attack them just to see what's gonna happen. Oh my gosh, we got absolutely decimated. We're gonna take the metals and we are going to unlock the machine gun light tank. Ooh, and if we can hold this off. Now look at that, my guys have metals, or armor rather. We'll use a metal for conversion just to get us out. And we're gonna purchase our light tank, the Renault FT-17. But the British were really, really known for good artillery and good use of artillery. All right, we gotta fix this guy's sound effect. He's firing like he's, it sounds like he's firing a main gun. <laughs> Instead of a machine gun, he's just crushing everything too. Oh, I love development builds. It's part of the process, right? So maybe the Brits have one of their tech tree upgrades is a scout plane, which increases the accuracy. But the other one that I thought was really cool was the creeping barrage. Maybe the Brits have something that upgrades their artillery barrage to a creeping barrage, and it has a nice big red maple leaf on it because it was the Canadians who first used the creeping barrage tactic. Now, I'm not sure how to do the creeping barrage just yet, but essentially it would like hit here, and then hit here, and then hit here. Maybe there would be three different lines. So if you timed it right, you could send your men out, and then it would creep and maybe suppress the defenders just a little bit and it would be kind of cool because the United Kingdom well this is what the United Kingdom looked like in 1914 they had parts of Canada well I guess that's looks like most of Canada and they had Australia and New Zealand which brings me to another question how good were the Anzacs which is not Australia New Zealand and Canada it's Australia New Zealand Arm Army Corps not to be confused all right soften them up there light tank <laughs> that sound effect is broken. Ooh, I think we know what we want to do here. We want to unlock the Renault F, the Char 2C rather, heavy tank. Oh, they're charging. Oh, and they gassed us. You sneaky devils. Let's see if this, nope. <laughs> I was like, let's see if this machine gun can do anything. All right, we've got to build up our defenses here. We got a machine gun. I think the Char 2C, which currently in this build, the range of it is a little bit broken, so it's not as effective as it could and should be. But let's see, the Char 2C versus these guys. Now they do have what looks like two, maybe three flamethrowers. So as soon as they get in range, they're gonna start roasting this guy. If this was supported by an infantry attack, it would have, well, performed naturally better. So back to the United Kingdom, we're gonna save France for last. 
So if Canada is an upgrade to the barrage artillery, which would turn it effectively to a Canadian unit, which I think would be cool, given it's the United Kingdom and all of its commonwealth, maybe the unique unit could be an Anzac trooper, but then it would be a unique infantry unit and Germany already has that. The other idea was maybe, maybe it could be the use of a plane. Man, this guy's just straight up rolling down and crushing. That machine gunner should have fired at it, so that was a little bit of a bug I think we just witnessed. The tank just died. We're gonna take the star's crate. We're gonna unlock our last tank. And with our last three medals, I'm thinking faster rifleman spawning so we can build up our infantry. Now, this is a pretty good push. So what I wanna do is just straight up crack right into the trenches. Oh, they gassed us. <gasps> Only one guy survived that gas attack. That was sad. Once again, we're sent back to the drawing board, but the timing is okay because we are wrapping up the ideas based on what we're thinking as the developers and what you guys are thinking as the community, what to do with the United Kingdom. Now, one of the other things I saw a lot of in the comments was that the Brits were known for their tanks. Ouch, ouch. Maybe we need to upgrade to gas masks or also get an officer out here because they've used gas pretty effectively twice. Now we're gonna send out the cannon tank, light tank anyway, to sort of counterattack by us a little bit of time. But yeah, the Brits were known for their tanks, so maybe instead of France, they should be the tank faction. And I also saw this in the comments and I would agree with it. Oh my poison gas. They are kicking our butts. We'll take the medals because we need gas masks. And I think we need officers and we'll turn the last one in. So there we go. I love the French officers hats. I think they're just phenomenal. But while the British were one of the first to use tanks in World War I, and they had some pretty good ones with the Mark V's and Mark IV's, it really was the French that sort of perfected tank warfare and created the first modern tank, the Renault FT-17. As you can see here, it had a fully traversable turret, and that was one of the main reasons why it was considered the first modern tank. Haha! -ha, not as many people are dying now. I mean, people are still dying, but not as many. Well, that wasn't very effective. Germany is the specialist infantry faction. United Kingdom is the artillery faction. And France, I think that leaves them as the armor and tank faction. Now, a lot of people are saying that France should be better at, uh, faster at retreating <laughs> and also maybe reinforcing or crossing no man's land. But I think that's mostly a meme about, you know, French tanks have one forward gear and seven reverse gears because they like to retreat and all that stuff. Dang. This is the most I've seen the AI use gas before. Oh, wow. And right before an attack. That was pretty well synchronized. Ooh, we got very lucky with that artillery. Let's charge over the top here. Take care of that sniper. Clear out this machine gun and take the middle ground of no man's land back for us. I'm gonna take the metals as much as I wanna spawn in a tank. So as far as what the French unique unit could be, there's a couple of different ways we could go about this. One is actually that the Renault FT-17, this beauty right here would be the unique unit. It could be somewhere in between a light and a heavy tank, but then we would need a new light tank for the French and we could do so by bringing in the Schneider CA-1 as the light tank. That's one idea, or maybe the saint Chamond could be a heavy tank or a unique unit and then the Char 2C, this absolute beast, could be a super heavy tank, and that would be the unique unit for the French. Oh my goodness, man. The enemy just destroyed my light tank, but we got this guy coming in. So <laughs> once he rumbles across the battlefield, we'll be in a pretty good position to attack. So that's one of the ideas for the French. There's technically a lot. We could make the Char 2C a super heavy and the Saint Shaman be the heavy tank, or it could be the Renault FT-17 be the unique tank and we bring in the Schneider CA-1. I think my vote personally, and I would love to hear what you guys think, is make the Char 2C a super heavy and make the Saint Shaman a heavy tank. It had a 75 millimeter frontal facing gun, so definitely fits the profile of a heavy tank. All right, let's see how this thing does in action. Once again, the range needs to be fixed because it lost about 50% of its health before it started getting in there. What we're gonna do is a, a triple tank attack. Timing this is tricky. Upgraded trench, upgraded machine gun bunker. We took very little loss to artillery, which was one of the earliest criticisms of the game by a lot of people who weren't familiar with it was how difficult enemy artillery was. Now we have to go out there and shoot this guy and probably lose these guys. All right, 
So I'm thinking once the Char 2C gets here, we launch the lights. Oh, we might lose that. We'll take the medals, please. And we will get the final upgrade, which is more armor for our infantry. Look at this. If we time this right, oh, the Char 2C is going to die. But it did soften up and did do its job. What we want to do is a coordinated attack. Actually, we might not need to. We'll see how far these tanks get because we still have a little bit more to discuss. So other ideas right now, especially for the AI, ooh, coordinating with tanks and infantry is pretty important. Oh man, they're not gonna, they're not gonna survive this. Look at that, we summoned 10 tanks. The enemy summoned zero, but they definitely went hard in the paint on the special abilities. We saw so much good use of chemical artillery and decent artillery usage as well. Infantry was pretty e similar, and this was normal difficulty, and I'm quite familiar with playing the game. Now, one of the things we haven't shown off is the new map types. I'm gonna do the Germans, and I'm gonna try to do a light tank rush if possible. Now, I wanna get over this water because this is one of the first times we experimented with like maps not being mirrored. So we sort of have like a distinct disadvantage in that we have to cross this water. But I wanna show off the light tractor. But yeah, infantry running behind tanks, basically their attack being synced up and coordinated, I think that might be a unique tech upgrade to sort of make a commander tank or put in a radio or something like that. Something that once you do that, if you have the tank rolling and the infantry then attack right after it, they won't go in front of it. They'll stay either at its side or right behind it. I think it being a tech upgrade would be good. Another one is if you have officers and they're in a trench, basically like when you go to attack with your men, I think like people want to hear that like, you know, like the whistle from those movies and TV shows about World War One, where like the officer blows the whistle, people pour over the top of the trench and charge, right? I'm thinking if you have an officer and maybe a certain amount of infantry, like 10 or more, and you do an attack and hit the little attack arrow, that's when you get the whistle. Oh man, they've got a lot of officers. It would really add to like, when that happens, you know whoever's attacking is sending in a lot of men, whether it's you or the enemy. So we're gonna add a little bit of cheats right here and call in two of the like tractors and a little bit of classic German poison gas. Now, they've got a lot of officers, so it won't be very effective, but if we time this right, see right now you have to micro it, right? That's gonna kill a few of them. And then the infantry arrive shortly behind. Let's go. All right, this is working. And there's definitely a sound effect for, I think, all the light tanks right now. So there is the German light tank in action with a little bit of help from, uh, we'll say the Swiss banks, but in reality it was a little bit of hacks on the development build. So, once again, the ask of today is, what would you like to see first? The unique unit for all three factions, the unique upgrades, or the passive buff? And once again, leave your ideas for those in the comments. And if you see someone else's comment and it's just a brilliant idea, make sure to give it an upvote so it's more than likely to pop to the top of these this huge collection of thousands of comments that we're getting by you guys every video. So thanks so much for supporting Stickman Trenches. Remember that you can get it on Steam using the link in the video description below, and I'll see you in the next video.